It's time to quilt. everybody. First of all, I want to thank those of you who have subscribed to my channel. I'm very excited to share my videos with you. This is the second of a three-part series on wool applique by machine. Today, we're going to do some decorative stitching inspired by the hand embroidery on folk art wool applique. Here you see my prototype piece on which I have completed the decorative stitching. We're going to do something similar today. The first thing to do is decide which stitches you want to do by stitching out your ideas on a test piece. Once you decide you like a particular stitch, then stitch out two or three repeats on a stitch library like this one. A stitch library is just a piece of fabric you use to keep samples of different stitches as a future reference for what they really look like. Over time, you may build up several of these. They're a great reference in your sewing room, and they don't take up much space. Just remember to write the number of the stitch and whatever settings changes you may have made so you will know what to use when you get to your main piece. Now let's move to the machine, and I'll show you some of my stitching process. For this decorative stitching, I'm using a 12-weight wool blend thread by Aurafil Threads. For embellishments, you really want a heavy thread like this so it stands out and makes a ball line. It needs a large 116 needle. It helps to thread the needle with a tooth floss threader, which will go through the eye of these larger needles. Loop the thread into the loop of the floss threader, and then you can pull the floss threader and the thread through easily. First, I'm working on the test pieces, doing several tests of stitches that look like they will work for decorating the flower stems in a similar fashion to hand-stitched embroidery. Here I'm using the center of my open-toed embroidery foot to guide along the edge of the applique. like all three I tried here, so I'll add them to my stitch library and then use them all. Be sure to note the numbers of the stitches you pick so you can find them again easily. A lot of hand stitchers outline some of their appliques to highlight them. We'll do the same thing here with our stems and leaves. And here I've moved the needle as far to the right as possible, and I'm using the inside edge of the right toe of the foot to guide along the edge. I'm using stitch number six on my machine. 
It's a very nice triple stitch that looks very much like a hand stitch with the wool thread. This stitch was originally developed for use as a stretch stitch and can go a full width too, but when set for straight stitching, it makes a nice outline stitch. I think one of the most enjoyable parts of this stitching process is using decorative stitches to turn the circles into flowers. This is an opportunity to experiment with stitches you may never have used. It's helpful to work only one decorative repeat at a time without moving it, and then turn and repeat until you get around the circle. If you try to move it around the circle while the repeat is stitching, you're likely to misalign the pattern and make it mess up the design. To get a little more precision, I'm sewing around the circles using the push button controls instead of my pedal. If you want to learn more about that, I also put out a separate quick tips video just recently showing how this works. Here I'm using stitch number 140 on my Bermina. It's a scallop stitch that you can probably find on your machine. Stitch slowly at first and place the stitching so the left end point of the scallop stitches on the applique and the scallop itself swings out like lace. Stitch only one pattern without turning. Stop, turn, and then repeat all the way around the circle. Overlap or stop short when you come back around if the last repeat doesn't fit. Usually whatever you do here will look just fine. My machine has a way to set it to make only one repeat of the pattern at a time. Look in your machine's manual since a lot of machines today can do that and it's helpful here.
Here I chose a stitch design that stitches on both sides of the line where I place the line along the edge of the applique. You can see that you can stitch on the inside of the circle too if you desire. You can even do single repeats of small designs to add interest to the center of the applique like I did here. As you see, I've finished the decorative stitching on all the appliques. Originally, I thought I would add weeds and grasses at the bottoms of these designs, but I decided it would look better to do free motion grasses when I do the quilting. However, here is a white cotton stitch library that I have stitched some examples of designs that would make nice weeds. I might try some of these the next time I make a project like this. If your piece has some blank spots where you think the addition of some clumps of weeds and grasses might make a difference, then look for stitches like this on your machine. Take a look at the whole piece now. It's ready to sandwich and quilt and bind, but we'll do that in the third video. Don't forget to subscribe and like my video. And if you put a question in the comments, I will likely see it and respond. See you next time. Once you decide on stitches you like, stitch out two or three repeats on a wool, <coughs> on a, on a whatever this is. <laughs>